Seems the lure of crowded beaches and watered down cocktails are back on the menu. But why run to the sun when we've got our own pot of gold right here on our doorstep? Breathing slowly I smoke my burn your eyes Listen closely Tease won't help this time Precision planning and desire for adventure, I set off for pastures new. A week off work presents so many options, but I've always fancied venturing out west. And I'm not talking Reading here, I mean West West. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a good 200 plus miles to my final destination, but it's worth it. Or at least I hope it will be anyway. We arrive at my first port of call, where I'm going to break up the journey with a short session on the glorious Welford Pools here in the Cotswolds. got a day and a half here so time is precious and I need to get set up before that sun disappears. Wow, what a lake. The autumn days are getting shorter and shorter. At least it's nice and peaceful here. Soup for one, Netflix at seven, sleep at 7.30. Cool, blimey, I'm getting old. Note to self, always check location for military bases and runway traffic. In this case, both right next door. So once the ringing in my ear is clear and my heartbeat drops to its normal pace, I take in the beautiful surroundings and assess my situation. Very little happened in the night. A few liners, a Bosch or two, but no fish. And I'm even contemplating a move already. You know when you get that itch, you just gotta stay on your toes in this game, right? Do 
I? Don't I? Um, yeah, come on. Let's do it. down to Welford Pools here in the Cotswolds and it is a beautiful lake um, shape it's kind of like two bowls joined together with this bit here and yeah I turned up yesterday afternoon quite late actually uh, the sun was beating down and showing off all these gorgeous autumn colors and now it's gray as hell so basically I set up put a couple of bags out last night one to the island, one on the margin near the pump, and nothing, nothing, not a, not a jimmy. And, well, yeah, I sort of had a wander around, had a chat with a guy in this swim. He had six fish over the last couple of days. Uh, he's fishing in this channel here, and it's just a natural patrol route for them to get from pool to pool. So I thought, I'm gonna get in there. So I moved down this morning, and rudely, rudely awakened this morning by the jets taking off over there. My God, it sounded like the end of the world. But yeah, so my alarm went off at seven. I was really awakened at six. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of hopeful. It feels carpy, even though I hate that word. Um, there's a couple of little areas which I'm definitely seeing fish. There's a bar that runs over the back there and I've actually just, I think it was a trailer but it was a slow pickup and I sort of struck into it and nothing was there. But, you know, there's a few features to go out here. Kind of fingers crossed. So I'm here until tomorrow afternoon. I'm heading west towards ross on Wye. Oh, you probably will guess why I'm going, but something different. Even though I love my carp fishing, just fancy something else. The afternoon slowly creeping by, and although my move this morning felt like the right thing to do, it doesn't seem to have paid off. Not yet, anyway. Well, the traps are set. What else can I do but sit and wait?
come to the conclusion that not all time on the bank is quantifiable. It's not all about the chase. It's about slowing down the day to day and appreciating the moment. Where the f are these fish? I'm only joking. Netflix by 7, sleep by 7.30. Well, good morning. It was a very quiet night, apart from the fish boshing to my right. But nothing. Very quiet indeed. Just had a chat with one of the uh, guys who's fish here quite a lot. Says it's not a very easy lake, this. He said their fish have seen it all. Got to be super quiet. Um, but yeah, giving it my best kind of writing this one off a little bit yeah so I might do a bit of a slow pack down get on the road head over to my next port of call got an Airbnb for tonight give my back a bit of a rest and I might go and visit the International Bird of Prey Centre as well on the way but yeah bring on tomorrow I say And there we have it, another session, another blank. Or is it? Uh, well, actually, I think that is definitely a blank. No fish equals a blank. Simple. Stupid. We set off once again, heading northwest this time towards New End. This is another location stop off before we hit our Airbnb tonight. We're heading for the International Bird of Prey Centre for a... Oh, bloody hell. Do we have to? Can we just go oh, to our hotel? I, I promise we won't be there long. Yeah, yeah, that's what you always say. 15 minutes tops, promise. No, it's all about you, isn't it? You, you, you. Oh, God, I'll buy you an ice cream. An ice cream? Uh, okay. Jeez. There are some incredible raptors here on display. Some of them from the far reaches of North America. Others right here in the UK. And although I'm never keen on seeing these majestic creatures in captivity, many of these birds almost certainly would have been in far worse condition had they not come here. Hats off to the staff for their care and devotion.
Now, as much as I live for the great outdoors, sometimes it's nice to wake up in a real bed. Thank you, Airbnb. It's early doors on Wednesday morning, and yes, finally, the main event beckons. Fingers crossed for a lovely day. song. How's it go? Then I look at you and the world's around me. Something like that anyway. Um, just wanna look at you and I know it's gonna be a lovely day. Ah, the wrong profession, yeah? <laughs> Please somebody help me. Morning. So I've just arrived at my next port of call here in Ross on Wye. And um, come on, come have a look, come have a look. Welcome to the wonderful fishers here in the glorious town of Ross on Wye. And wow, what a cool looking shop. They've got everything an angler could want here, including tackle, bait, bears, and hats. And you know I love a good hat. I'm meeting Angling Dreams owner and my fishing guide for the next couple of days, Mr. Adam Fisher. worked out already, I'm here to fish the magnificent river. Why? So, a little history for you. One of the most iconic rivers in Great Britain, the Wye rises from the mountains of Wales, flowing south for some 150 miles, becoming part of the border between Wales and England before joining the Severn. In its lower stretches, it winds 45 miles through the Wye Valley an area of outstanding natural beauty, from south of Hereford down to Chepstow. This spectacular stretch is called Simmons Yat. Flowing through a limestone gorge, the river is a mixture of gravel runs, deep channels, and offers some incredible salmon and coarse fishing. It even boasts some big carp here too, but it's most famous for its salmon and barbel. The Y has been on my filming bucket list for so many years, having seen it on TV and media. And now, to see it firsthand, well, it's just awe-inspiring. And I have a mission. For the 40 plus years that I've been an angler, I've never caught a barbel. So this is a very exciting and personal quest for me. These next couple of days are by far my most anticipated adventure thus far.
right, enough jabber. Let's pull our trousers up and get on with the fishing. Adam guides us to our first swim and walks through the basics on tackle and approach. Proper newbie stuff. Now, I've got some good and bad news. So, the bad news, well, you know how difficult it is to self-film these adventures and sometimes things don't always go to plan. Um, you know, camera positioning and location obstacles and... Anyway, the good news. Yes, I missed the take and caught on my first cast. Oh well. <laughs> I have caught my first barbel and I'm very, very happy. <laughs> Adam, come here. Come here, come here. Get in the shot with me. <laughs> there we go. What a cracker, eh? That is gorgeous. Amazing. It's in great nick, you know. So how big is this? I reckon it's about five. Perfect. I reckon it's about five. That is lovely. What a cool day. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, that was amazing. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Early days, hopefully, as well. <laughs> right. Get her back. Wow. Cool. I really can't tell you how happy I am. My very first barbel. Awesome. We give the swim another five minutes and then move up a stretch. You gotta be fairly mobile with this type of fishing. The action continues late into the afternoon with some decent chub to around four pounds, a real testament to Adam's knowledge and guidance. I've loved every moment of today, but all good things must come to an end. So we decide to call it a day and retire to the pub. Standard. That's a view. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Um, good morning. I've come up this morning to Simmons Yacht Rock, which is absolutely incredible. Look at the view. I mean, look at that. That's incredible. So, yes, I'm going to head down there again today. I did go down yesterday. Didn't do a lot of filming. Just kind of got into the fishing and just enjoying it really so so today i'm going to uh, sit down with adam go through a few, you know a few techniques to have a chat put the mic on him and yeah there's another couple of days and then i'm going to sort of do something else tomorrow <laughs> and then head back home probably later in the evening but we'll see what happens but yeah today that's the mission for today so exciting <laughs> Oh, like a young child at Christmas. Bless him. And so begins another exciting day's fishing on a stretch of the Y called Home Fishery. Adam opts the maggot feeder, whilst I try the boilie and pellet approach, which worked for me yesterday. Both methods have caught fish, so all our bases are covered. And the 
winning method this morning is the maggot feeder. Exciting. How does it feel? Fantastic. <laughs> I just love this um, the softness in the rod and the bend through. It's, it, it's brilliant. It's one of the best parts about playing the ball. And it's coming up now. It feels, I hate to say it, quite often they feel good and they're not necessarily that big, but it does feel good. It's oh. <laughs> number four. It's got some spirit, this one. <laughs> yeah. Making my arm ache. <laughs> well done oh, I'm going on chuffed with that what a what a fight what a fight <laughs> ah dear perfect well done there <laughs> thanks Simon <laughs> worked hard for that yes how long did it take that? Oh. oh that was in there about 10 minutes there but we're trying these different swims and um, yeah on a tough day when we know that not many other people are catching on the river but um, that was on the maggots yeah um, and I was hoping that the maggots would have worked yesterday which is why we fished them but yeah um, there's certainly one of the maggots there <laughs> fantastic wow well, that's good work sir what a wonderful prize. Oh, what a fight. I think the... <laughs> it could grow into quite a big fish, that one, I fancy. It's, um, Small head, but a big bar of muscle. <laughs> hey. Give us a smile for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Well done, mate. <laughs> Anyway, times are ticking and it looks like we're outstaying our welcome with the locals. Time to move on, I think. We're back on Simmons Yacht where I finally get the chance to sit down with Adam and talk about the experience and the wonderful fisheries he runs. So, a massive, huge thank you for showing me the way and introducing me to a new way of fishing. It's a pleasure, Simon. It's um, been very exciting, as you can cool, probably it? tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it. It's so it's just oh, it's an amazing place. Um, so much to see, so much to do. Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, lots of lots of room for activities. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But you know, the, the mixture of learning, obviously, this whole new art and um, um, catching fish as well. Yeah, it helps. Uh, yeah, and yesterday we, we had a couple, or yeah. 
we had a barbell. Well, and, you had your first one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was absolutely amazing. Yeah, no, they're, yeah, they're, pr they're pretty special. <laughs> and I, I, I'm almost a bit jealous that you having the opportunity to catch your first one. Oh, it's, it's, it's great. And the smile on your face yeah. sort of showed how much you enjoyed it. So. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about angling drinks. Um, so, oh, well, the duck will tell you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, angling, it started here, really, on, on this fishery. Yes. Um, uh, a mate of mine has a hotel just up the valley there, and um, the fishery was coming up for let. Yeah. And he had the contact with the owner, and he sort of said to me, you know, look, would you be interested in, in taking it on? Um, he had ideas that perhaps putting people through the hotel and that sort of thing and he, he ran it by me and I said look let's do what we can to get it I, I grew up on this stretch yeah, yeah. Um, just on the top of the hill there and and it, it meant a lot to me to have the opportunity to do it yeah um, and at the same time as that coming up there were opportunities for another couple of fisheries right um, and I was working for for, for a company that um, that ran fishing on the river right. and it was an opportunity to consider well if I, if I got my own portfolio of fisheries what, what could we do with it? Yeah. Um, fisheries that perhaps I didn't want to let be managed by an agent or by a, another body that um, you know may do something with it that I wasn't I wasn't particularly happy with. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so with, it, it, at that time there was an opportunity for a few fisheries and to formalise it a little bit, rather than it being in my name or his name or whatever, yeah. we thought, well, why don't we create a company? Mm -hmm. um, or to, just to give it a brand give, and, and see what happens. Yeah. And we went through lots of different names, Fish the Dream, yeah. um, Fish the Why, you know, so on. And, and um, obviously not knowing what the future could hold, we didn't want to box ourselves away as being all about the why. Yeah. Um, Fish the Dream was a little bit, you know, and was, and it, was the domain available to buy? It? it was, and I think I've still got it just oh, in yeah. case. <laughs> I think I've, I've actually still got yeah the email as well. All right, okay. Um, uh, it's inquiries at Fish the Dream, and I learned quite quickly that inquiries is no good in an email address because a lot of people can't spell it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so that it, immediately Fish the Dream was like no, right. and angling dreams, and I wasn't over the moon. I thought, oh, would, you know, what is it? But we we. I went into looking then at websites. Yes. Um, I thought, well, I'm sure I've got the time. I can do my own. Yeah, so yeah. I looked at the, you know, Weebly and whatever else that, that you can do them on and just had a play around and it seemed quite easy. <laughs> and Angling Dreams fitted and... Um, oh, that was a plug. Oh, little... <laughs> oh, and mine. And yours. <laughs> um, and, and it... The, the, the response to Angling Dreams was, was a lot better than I thought. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it was mates or family or even customers as we pitched to say, how are we going to run it? Well, let's run it as a membership or a syndicate first. Yes. Angling Dreams was nice. Yeah. And yeah. it stuck. Yeah. And I didn't expect it to. So that's how Angling Dreams started. Yeah. The website with photographs just moved on from there. Yeah. The number of fisheries grew. We found the opportunity to be an agent for other fisheries, yeah. um, and that's exactly what Angling Dreams was about. Right. All run from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that. So, how how long ago was that? That, that is twenty um, about ten years ago. Wow. Okay. Blimey. Yeah. And, and sort of going, you know, I've I've spoken to you before and inquiries and and having a look around your website and you've got you've, you've worked with so many amazing people um, and they obviously love pushing here yeah and, um, but yeah yeah to name a few you know Ali's been down with the crew Dean yeah. and, and then you know well, everybody who's anybody yeah we've we've been really lucky and and I think as as much as it's angling dreams it's it's you know it's always been about fishing and, yes. and I, I, lo I, lo I love the concept of being able to work in something that that I enjoy yeah. I always have th thought I'd like to do that yes I never knew it was going to get to where it has got to but it it, it was such a, it was such a natural growth, a positive growth. Yeah. 
I didn't have to try too hard. Yeah. I just stuck to my principles that things have got to be done professionally. Yeah. Communication in, in email form or whatever has got to be, you know, your punctuality has got to be right, your grammar and your presentation, it's got to be polished. Yes. And sticking, I think, to those good communication yeah. skills, organisational skills, yeah. The opportunities then came with the likes of Ali. Yes. I said, look, we'd like to do some filming on one of your waters. And I, I, I'd hope, you know, we had no real background for him to have faith in that, apart from the fact that we, we must have come across, you know, clean, clean enough, professionally yeah, yeah, enough that, yeah. that he could deliver his product or his, fil his films and whatever else. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, so that's sort of the... You know, Ali's obviously a bit, you know, big in, in, in the carp and obviously mm. into into all his fishing, but, you know, legends, you know, Chris and, yeah, I, and Martin yeah. and all these guys have... That's it. And then and then in in between that, you know, Jeremy Wade has been down and, and, and done a little bit. Claudia Darga has yeah. been here and done a bit. Um, Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, I was telling you earlier, yes. we had a minnow yeah, comp yeah, yeah. and then swimming with Barbel. <laughs> That's nothing to do with fishing as such. Yeah. It was then he needed access and he needed the right waters. Right, yeah. And obviously film crews need the access, they need yeah. the privacy, the exclusivity. Yeah. Um, but they're committing to quite a lot. They're committing crew, they're committing all sorts, and they have to have faith that when they get there, it's going to be, it's going to work. It's going to be right, yeah. yeah. And, and fortunately, we, we were able to deliver. Yeah. They enjoyed it, which then became good testimonials for us. Yeah. And so people just... Uh, followed on from them with that faith of our our record and our experience, which right. is brilliant, really. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell me about the actual fishing side of it as well. So, barbel in the, in yeah. the water, we put barbel, yeah. chub, pike, uh, roach, dace, roach, bleak, all yeah. the silvers in between. But barbel's the one. That's yes. what. That's what the why at this particular time is yes. is famous for. Yeah. And it's what people want. Obviously, historically, salmon was. Yes, like as we just seen one jump out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which is pretty impressive. Is that what's awesome, there? Um, yeah. yeah, the salmon was was, and a lot. What happened was with the decline in salmon numbers. Yeah, these fisheries became available. Right. Where. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we wouldn't have got near them as dirty coarse anglers. Right, right, right. Uh, maybe in the winter. Yeah. But that's just, you know, I say dirty coarse anglers. Coarse angling was kept for the winter after yeah. the salmon guys had finished their bit. Right, right. But with the decline in the salmon run, owners were a little bit despondent with their fisheries. Yeah. Um, you know, what can we do? How can we get the salmon numbers back? And of course, we leave that to the Rivers Trust, the Wireless Foundation, to deal with. Um, restoring that salmon run. Yeah. But in the meantime, by offering barbel fishing on an exclusive basis, limited numbers, high value, low volume, yes. has, given a, um, has given those owners um, their, their, their fishery as an asset again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an asset when it was a salmon fishery, but as the salmon declined, the fishing's worth nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the barbel fishing almost, I mean, who's to know because of inflation and all the rest of it, yeah. is the barbel fetching more money than the salmon? Um, yeah, I, yeah. That, that, that's a tricky one, we'll never know, but, yeah. but so, barbel replace salmon. Basically. Yeah. So do you think this is um, a great place to sort of, you know, learn to, to do barbel? And... I think this fishery is, is, can be brutal. Right. It's, it's two and a half miles long, double banks, there's five miles of bank fishing, as you've seen, yes. and as we're looking at right in front, it's yeah, wild. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough, the banks are steep. It's yeah. a little bit daunting. Yeah. There are many easier fisheries. Right, right. But I think for the experience of coming to the Y and the Y Valley, yeah. this is about as good as it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could sit here and not catch a fish and still have had a better day than if you'd gone somewhere else and caught 20. Yeah, of course, of course. For me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's it's an absolute breathtaking view. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, um, you've heard me say it a lot, but actually I could just walk here and yeah. fishing comes sort of normal, since comes second. But, um, but I mean, I've, I've learned so much, like even in the last couple of days, um, but it's an, it's an automatic switch that I'm now, you know, I want to see more, I'm going to do more. That's great. And, you know, that's kind of possibly where you're, the angling dreams. Yeah. Uh, you know, is... Uh, that we didn't know we were delivering, or we don't know we're delivering sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it, it helps to, to remain passionate. And, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's such a cliche, isn't it, that once your love becomes work, it may not be 
yeah. I love anymore. That's right, that's right. We love what we do. Yeah. And having people who come here for the first time like you, or even if it's their 50th time. Yes, yeah, yeah. The, the, we hear it so much more, just being here is enough. Yeah. And really that's what, in, inadvertently we have, we've come to sell is, it's the access. Yes, yeah, yeah. And the fishing is good because we limit the numbers. Um, you know, it doesn't get pressured. Yeah. But it's the, if you put the access first, I mean, how lucky are we? Yeah. I mean, I, even myself, I feel so lucky that I can come here and open the gate and drive down. It's my access too. Yeah, 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 of course. And it's my access first. You know, I'm only five minutes from home, as you know. <laughs> but the access first and the fishing is, is secondary. Yeah, almo yeah. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if you are, you know, if you're an angler who's never been barbel fishing or, you know, even chub fishing, you mm. know, is, is it something that is accessible to to the public? And yeah, very much so. Yeah. So you, you, you go on our website or a Google search yeah. would do it. Um, yeah. The Fishing Passport, which is part of the Wynos Foundation, have loads of day ticket water. Yeah. There are clubs, um, good clubs, yes. with more affordable fishing, yeah. as if, if, you, if you want to use that word. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's very accessible. The yeah. maps are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's used to it now. All the local stakeholders are used to it. The local accommodation right. is is very accommodating yeah, to, yeah. to anglers. Of course. Um, and yes, I, th I think it's really accessible. Yeah. And that's what we're here for as well. If you are, you know, we understand it's daunting, but you're not going to come here as a rank beginner to fishing. Yeah, yeah. You will have fished somewhere. Yeah. And um, as 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 an angler we really encourage you to almost figure it out yourself a little bit. Yeah. Just book it and go, enjoy yeah. it, and the rest should slot into place. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because there are some sort of very, you know, the similarities in, in certainly in tackle and, um, uh, but I mean, even for me, bringing a slightly heavier rod, mm. now I'm using one of yours, thank you, thank you very much. And, um, you know, it's just, it's a different fight. You just get a different experience with yeah. it. And that, that, I think, is, is all part of the learning curve. Yeah. Um, and that's why it's all, I think it's so good to go out of a guide. Yeah. Because um, they show you every different sort of, you know, way to, to learn. And, and if, if nothing else can give you confidence that what you're doing is right. Yes, yeah. And I, and I really enjoy that, if I'm honest with you. I yeah. don't like changing what people do or telling them, don't talk like telling people how to fish. Yeah. If that's the way you fish, great. Yeah. But you could try this, and if you find that's better, then you may you may change to that, yeah, like yeah. that rod, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people come with heavy rods. It's, it's a really common thing. They think big river, you need a big rod. Yeah. And perhaps even other shops in the country will say, oh, you're going to the wire, you'll need a big rod. Yeah. And I like a soft rod anyway. Mm. Um, just but you don't action. need the big gear. Yeah, yeah, I like the through, I like a right through to the core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Done. <laughs> oh, there you go, look, look at that. Man. And just like that, yeah. we're in again. Oh, shoot. Oh. So it's definitely a barbel. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Chubb sort of bends half the rod, and a barbel will bend it to here. Right. Oh. Literally just as we stopped chatting. Yeah. They were just waiting, weren't they? Yeah, and that's, you just, it's just when you least, it, you just never know. <laughs> what? Oh no, don't go solid on me. Oh no. Oh no, What's don't go solid on me. Oh no. Snag. Oh no. He's out again. Oh, 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 oh. He's out again. Oh. Oh no. Back in. I've just got, I'm trying to keep the pressure on. Yeah. Yes, we're free. Yes. Yes, we're free, he's out. I just hope the line's not damaged, Simon. Yeah. See the thing, oh, we're going weak at the knees. The reason is because, because we're fishing for a decent fish, you, d you don't know whether to play it hard or easy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's coming a bit easier now. 
They fight so hard. Ah, oh, they do. <laughs> God, the fry jumping is mad, isn't it? It's incredible. Yeah, it's an angry fish as well. You can do the head shakes. It's um. Here it is. There oh, it's it is. a good fish. Oh, it's a good wow. fish. Oh, oh. oh hey, the nears crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Beautiful in the water, mate. Yeah, gorgeous. they're stunning, aren't they? Those swimmers' rolls when they just come up and then turn. Wow. That's one of the best parts about, about catching them, I think, for this. Wow. Brilliant. That's a handsome fish. We might be toe hunting him back. But <laughs> we can't do it. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, yes. Well oh. done, that man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is awesome. Timing, hey? Yeah, amazing. God, I'm shaking again. My arm's going. <laughs> I'm, out, I'm out of practice. <laughs> Wow. So we'll just give him a little rest first. Yes. Yeah, because they've worked so hard. And That's it. And yeah. I think this is the crucial point um, for me in resting. In the summer, you have to rest them a lot. Yeah. Um, but resting them as soon as you've um, netted them like that, I think is key to, to welfare. Yeah. <sighs> wow. That's incredible. Well done, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Steady. That's a proper one. That is a beauty. We've worked very hard, haven't we? Yes. So far, and just as the light was dropping, I think the witching hour, as, as they say, that came along and that was an angry fish. <laughs> he tore off, didn't he, to start with, and made me think he might have been a, a bit bigger, but I don't really care, to be honest. That's... Um, it's in Super Nick, like the others, isn't it? Yeah, that's beautiful, isn't it? And you'd remember that one. He's, uh, looks like he might be going blind in that eye. Oh, yeah. So we'd recognise that one. <laughs> wow, incredible. Their mouths are just mad, aren't they? They are, yeah. They've got this, um, when you pull down like that, look. They're obviously on the bottom, sucking and blowing like that. Yeah. But beautiful coral fins, big fins. Yes. You can see the power. Love and then these, these guys here, these pecs, they sit out like that, like an aeroplane in the flow. Yeah. They're not going mad like carp do on the. No, mats. no, they're very well behaved. Yeah. But like any fish, you don't want to keep them out too long. No. Should we get her back. Should we slip this one back and. Yeah. Well done then. Thank you. <laughs> Your turn next. Oh, cool. Just rest them a little bit yeah. before they go back and make sure and you can drop the net. What you want them doing is sitting upright. Yeah. If they start to go belly up like that, once they go upside down, they won't right themselves. Right. So you have to make sure you've held them long enough that they can keep themselves upright. I want to say a huge, huge thanks to Adam for a wonderful couple of days fishing and helping me make my dreams come true. Thank you, mate. And so... The final morning. As I leave my comfortable dwellings for the last time, I feel a twinge of sadness leaving this beautiful place. But I'm sure I'll be back soon. So good morning. Filming is nearly done. This is my last day. I'm heading back later this afternoon. I had an amazing day yesterday. And Adam's just super nice guy and awesome angler what can i say it was really really good fun learned a lot this week learned a lot this week 
Um, excuse me, I'm going into super shadow here. Um, yeah, learned a great deal about you know a new technique, new way of angling for me, and I'm pleased to say that I have actually caught my first barbel, which was just fantastic. And yes, I'm I'm hooked, as they say. So uh, this won't be the last one. I'll be. Now, you know when you're dreaming, that perfect dream, and then you wake up suddenly, and then you dream that if only you could continue that dream, well, this is that, basically. Um, I think you might have missed the word dream from the script. Hmm. Being the lucky sod I am, and in the right place at the right time, my bucket list is about to overspill. For I've been granted access to explore one of the most iconic lakes in Britain. My journey ends here, on the historical Redmire Pool. Life is all about adventure. Long may it continue.